And later we will do a lesson about uh, fluid dynamic or uh, about the conservation of energy or, or of momentum. You can then come back and say, remember when you used this rocket? Remember when you had to, to use this for your moon habitat? You needed an energy, this kind of energy device or this kind of waste facilities. Then we can come back on this and see if we go deeper on this very principle of conservation of energy, where does it lead us? Or if we speak about uh, particles and we just spoke about cosmic rays and protecting the habitat from cosmic rays, we just did it in a very general way and then in the school we can go deeper. So for now that's how it's, it's been tested. Uh, there are, if there are other ways, we are very happy to explore them as well. Is that fine for all of you? So I, I, will, I will have just a few words of recommendation if you, if you want to use these resources. Globally, the people who use them are quite happy. They are, I have to say, the main issue I, we have with them is that everything is embedded on the Airbus website, which is the company Airbus website. So it's not super user-friendly. It's acceptable, but it's not super user-friendly. It could be better. However, the, the content itself is quite we have quite some good feedback about it. Just a few words about aerospace and storytelling. You will use if you, these, these resources, you will obviously build stories. It can be the story of the small villagers, it can be a rocket going, it can be whatever you want. There will be stories, there are always stories, they're everywhere. When there are stories, I would like to urge you to just be mindful of a few things. The first one is be mindful of gender. We, you know this very well now, but space science and flight science used to be seen as a very managed thing. It is now being much more open. Please be very mindful to include on your side, slides as many women as possible, as many girls as possible. Remember that if we see an astronaut with a helmet and we don't see the face, if we don't see the face, it's not a neutral person. We automatically assume it's a boy. Children very often assume it's a boy. Please show women faces, show that they are here, they are here now in the news, and but also on your presentation on everything. Keep, keep them this. I, I had this, I told the, the, this this morning as well, but I was quite happy because one year ago I saw a, a very wonderful presentation about space, but all the slides who had faces has, was, were faces of men. You could see only men astronauts. And at the end I, I was a bit of a killjoy. I asked the presenter, why did you use only men? Was that a choice? Uh, why did you said we had man manned mission and now we are starting to have mixed gender missions but no one seems to consider that we can have a woman only mission and he kindly listened to me and we moved on and I happen to have seen him here at this event yesterday and he did a presentation and there were women everywhere on his slides I was extremely grateful and happy so this speaking up is important, it can really change things for the students, but also for the other teachers. Second thing, when we deal with space exploration, we deal also with various kinds of stories, and obviously we have in the past spoken a lot about space conquest during the Cold War. We have spoken more recently a lot about space colonization, and it is a, a delicate matter. Wherever you stand, whatever you, you are your feelings about this, be mindful that you have a variety of students. Some of them have a background that is linked to colonization, have a background that is linked to conquest. And we have to be a little bit mindful about the storytelling we use. Uh, even, even I, I might be too sensitive, but even the, the fact that we very often, when we talk about space exploration, we make references to the ancient Egypt. You might have, for example, the Rosetta, uh, uh, the Rosetta Rose that we said, the Rosetta Stone. We have references for about the Rosetta Stone. We had uh, even yesterday a reference to the Tutankhamun uh, tomb that is open with a seal that we have to, to break the seal to open. We often have references to the pyramids. Like it's like we used to go to the Egypt to see the mysteries. Now we go to space. I'm not saying we should forbid anything. I'm just saying try. Let's try to be mindful of what we're dealing with. These are stories from a long time ago where white Euro Europeans were going into Egypt and discovering the mysteries of Egypt and studying Egypt, it's deeply rooted in colonization. And it's, I don't think it's a coincidence if we use so often these kinds of reference when we speak about space. Try to be mindful with them. You will have in your classes students who have roots, who have a story, 
with colonization, with conquest, with power, with oppression. The space exploration story can be a story of oppression, of power. It can also be another kind of story. It's not easy, but we can try to, to, to build a more sensitive one. Last thing, we, have, we used to tell a lot of stories about a great hero, which is usually an astronaut getting out in space, which is great, and you, we can keep doing this story, but we need to add another one, which in my view is even more important, which is the team story. The great achievement, as far as I'm concerned, is not having someone walk on the moon, it's having such a huge team of so different people with so different expertise, being able to work together for this great project and it works and there are not too many failures so at the end it works. This is fantastic. I have worked in European projects for years, even having a few institutions in Europe work together is quite a challenge. So having the European Space Agency and the NASA work together with all these countries and being able to send new things in the moon or beyond is I think a wonderful achievement and probably this is the kind of achievement we can try to give. And that's why also with the Moon Village we try to have collaborations. You have tried, you can use Tinkercad for collaboration. You can even build a space mission together with, you, with your class, having a small group doing the rocket, another small group doing the satellite, another small group doing the land rover. And basically you have a space agency and all the, 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 the labs and the, and the engineers and they are all building part of different things, but they have to work together to make sure every piece fit together so at the end you have a coherent and working mission. We are at the end of this presentation and this workshop. I would like to thank you very much for your participation. If you have last questions now, I can answer them now, or I'd be happy to discuss this uh, with a coffee later if you'd like. Thank you very much.